fact true. This would obviously be a huge scandal, but who would be to blame? We've got both the legal and political angles covered for you tonight. We've got criminal defense attorney David Bruno. He is on the case, but first up, let me talk with Florida Republican Congressman Matt Gates. He joins me now. Welcome back, Congressman. Well, thanks for having me, Kennedy. So let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, what do we know so far about someone interfacing with the Trump campaign for political purposes who was working for the FBI without naming names? Well, we've seen reports that the Trump campaign was the subject of some intelligence collection. That doesn't mean there was an FBI agent undercover uh, within the Trump campaign, but they were the subject of intelligence collection, which is a red line that we shouldn't cross as a country. Whether you're a Republican, a Democrat, a Libertarian, you should not be desirous of systems that allow people to use the apparatus of government to spy on their political enemies. Here's my worry, Kennedy. We're now off into having the Department of, Injusti of Justice investigate itself yet again. What the president really needs to do is immediately demand that the Department of Justice turn over to Devin Nunes and Trey Gowdy the documents that they have requested so that we can go through the regular process of declassifying those documents and showing the methods that were used to spy on a political campaign. But in the absence of that, we'll just be off in the typical, uh, you know, almost Groundhog Day experience we've had where we demand answers from justice, they delay, we don't get them, we get redactions, then we see those redactions aren't a result of national security, but just people's embarrassment. And so I think we need to move things along a lot faster. It's really difficult to sift through what is most important, what is truly scandalous, and what is a threat to the republic. Because both sides are taking the same information, and they are blowing it up as the worst thing that has ever happened to the republic, or something that is just a political passing fancy. So it's really hard to tell. It seems like there are two uh, distinct teams. And everyone who's involved in the process, whether it's voters or leaders in Congress, everyone seems to be losing here, and we're not getting any actual answers. Now, my concern is that if the Mueller investigation and the inspector general somehow don't deliver reports that are satisfactory to Republicans, they will use the very same robust spy apparatus on their political opponents because mm. uh, they did not see enough pushback with any of these investigations. How do you keep that from happening? That would be horrible. No political party should weaponize the intelligence community against their opponents, period. And it doesn't matter which side of the aisle you're on. But I would say that the work we've done in Congress has yielded results. I mean, obviously, the president fired Comey, but Deputy Director of the FBI, Andrew McCabe, fired and referred for criminal prosecution. Peter Strzok, demoted and reassigned. Lisa Page, gone uh, from the FBI. The leaker, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Baker, gone from the FBI. I understand uh, the that, but isn't, that, isn't so, most of that the result of the inspector general's work? Well, it's a, I think it's a combination of Devin Nunes' work, uh, Chairman Bob Goodlatte's work in the Judiciary Committee, the work that individual members of Congress have done to try to highlight these issues. I know this, Kennedy, if Hillary Clinton were president of the United States, there wouldn't be any of those firings. There wouldn't be any oversight of the deep state. And my worry is that if we continue to just beg for documents and then accept what we get in return, that the bad actors in the deep state will be able to run out the clock on us in hopes that somehow Democrats will regain control of the Congress, and then there'll be no functional oversight, and they could just go do what they want to politicize our intelligence community. I think the country deserves a lot better. Well, I understand that, but the problem is you keep giving more power and more spy tools uh, to the NSA and the FBI and the CIA that essentially amount to absolute power and blank checks. So it's a little disingenuous when you or anyone else in Congress from either party acts surprised when someone abuses the power for their own means. That's a totally fair criticism. So many of the revelations about the weaponization of our intelligence community uh, came to fruition after our vote to reauthorize FISA. And frankly, I don't know if I would have voted the same way if we had the information before us today that we have. And so uh, it is absolutely a fair criticism. I've tried to be bipartisan about the solutions. I went and found a bill introduced originally by Adam Schiff, the Democrat ranking member of the Intelligence Committee, to reform the FISA process, to create more transparency, more identifiable standards. And 
Adam Schiff now won't co-sponsor his own bill because I've taken it up as a Republican. So it's a fair bipartisan criticism. We need bipartisan solutions. But Democrats won't even support the reforms that they've uh, supported previously because they don't want to give any win to the Republicans to clean up the deep state. That's uh, true. And when, that it, when it becomes that political, we're no longer able to objectively look at what the problems are with a sort of bloated surveillance state. We all lose. And, and that is the great misfortune. Congressman, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kennedy. All right.